From Faraday's law of induction, we know that the induced EMF within the square coil will equal the negative n change in magnetic flux over change in time. Now, n is simply the number of turns in the square coil. We can assume that there is only one square coil here. There are not several of them stacked on top of one another. So in this problem, we're going to let n equal 1. Furthermore, the negative sign can be disregarded right now because the question asks us for the magnitude of the EMF, and magnitude is basically just a positive value. So we're going to rewrite Faraday's law of induction in the following manner. We're going to have the induced EMF is equal to simply the change in magnetic flux divided by the change in time. Now, to understand the change in magnetic flux that exists within this square loop, we have to notice, of course, that there is a solenoid that's passing through its center. The assumption that we're going to make is that the change in flux of the solenoid will be the same as the change in flux of the square loop, and that's because the solenoid is passing right through the loop's center. So really, the way we want to explore this question is to figure out the change in magnetic flux of the solenoid, which again will be the same as that of the square loop. Now, to figure out the change in magnetic flux of the solenoid, we have to remember two things. First of all, that the magnetic flux is basically equal to a magnetic field strength multiplied by an area. There's also a cosine of theta term in the equation for magnetic flux. However, the magnetic field that's being produced by the solenoid is passing right through the center of the square coil. And then you might remember that the square coil has an imaginary line going through its center that's called the normal line. So you can see that the normal line, colored in red, and the magnetic field produced by the solenoid would be parallel to one another. And because the normal line and the magnetic field produced by the solenoid are parallel, then the angle between them is zero degrees. Of course, the cosine of zero degrees is just one. So this value can be disregarded in our case, and we can simplify the magnetic flux to equal the magnetic field multiplied by the area. Now for a solenoid, we learned in an earlier chapter that the magnetic field strength is equal to a constant multiplied by the number of turns per unit length and then multiplied by the current. So what we're going to do is actually substitute this expression right here in for the magnetic field of the solenoid. So we have the magnetic flux of the solenoid equals the magnetic field, which was mu naught times lowercase n times i, multiplied by the area of the solenoid. And so what we'll do is recall that we're interested not so much in the magnetic flux, but the change in magnetic flux. So we can actually manipulate the magnetic flux equation in the following way. We can say that the change in magnetic flux would equal the constant times n times the change in current times the area. Now, how do we know the current is changing? Well, the question notes that right here, the current is changing at a particular rate, 28 and a half amps per second. So we can definitely, when writing the change in magnetic flux, indicate that it is the current that's changing, not the area or not any of the other values. So now we have an expression for the change in magnetic flux. We're going to substitute that into our induced EMF equation. So we'll have mu naught times n times the change in current times the area, all divided by the change in time. Now we're just going to kind of manipulate this equation just a little bit. This value right here, change in current over change in time, that is the 28 and a half amps per second. So we're going to want to just rewrite it a little bit here in the following manner. We might say mu naught times lowercase n times area, and then just put the delta i over delta t off on the side here. This is a mathematically equivalent form of the equation. So now we are ready to plug in the known values. This mu naught is a constant. It's equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 with a unit of tesla meter per amp. Lowercase n, recall, 
is the number of turns of wire per unit length. Well, the question says that there are 3.5 times 10 to the third turns per meter. So that is your lowercase n. It's the 3.5 times 10 to the third. 3.5 times 10 to the third turns per meter multiplied by the area of the solenoid. Now, the cross-section of a solenoid would be circular in shape. If you were to sort of go back to the picture and look this way down the length of the solenoid, you would see a circular cross-section. So we're going to need to substitute in pi r squared for area because that is the area of a circle. So we do pi times the radius squared. Now the radius was two centimeters. So we need to convert that into meters. We'll do two times 10 to the minus two meters, and then don't forget to square it. And then finally, we multiply by that delta I over delta T value, and that again was the 28 and a half amps per second. That is the rate at which the current in the solenoid is changing. So now we pick up our calculators and we punch this all in. And when we do that, we get an induced EMF of 1.58 times 10 to the minus 4. This is EMF, so this will come out in volts. Your homework might require millivolts, so we will remember that 1 millivolt is equivalent to 10 to the negative 3 volts. So if you multiply in that fashion, the volts will cancel out. So go ahead and multiply by 1 over 10 to the negative 3, and you end up with... 0.158 millivolts as the induced EMF in that square coil.